Hello, Monetization Nation. Imagine being a real estate developer and building a skyscraper on land someone else owns, and that the landowner has the right to change the price, the rules, and the terms of the land use at any time. That's insanity. Why would any sane developer invest so much time and money building that skyscraper when the landowner will eventually change the terms and destroy the investment? Yet, that's what nearly always happens when we build our businesses to be dependent on digital platforms other people own. In this episode, I'm going to share a story of how Harry's, the men's grooming company, built an email list with more than 100,000 subscribers in a week prior to their launch as part of a strategy to build their skyscraper on land they own, along with other great stories and secrets about platform strategy. Tectonic shifts are constantly transforming the earth and business causing destruction and huge growth opportunities. I'm Nathan William, the host of Monetization Nation, where we learn how to leverage business tectonic shifts to transform monetization. Jeff Rader and Annie Katz Mayfield are the co-founders of Harry's, a men's grooming company. They wanted to make a splash when their website launched. That's why they began a strong campaign to grow their email list before they'd even had much information about their new company out. Harry's used a strong referral campaign to grow their email list. Instead of launching their company's website, they had a simple two-funnel landing page. The landing page invited the visitors to sign up for their emails with the words, be the first to know above the box and step inside instead of the common confirm or submit button. These word choices created a sense of urgency and intrigue. Once the visitors signed up to receive the emails, they were brought to the second page of the website which was all about the referral program. This page contained a unique URL that the visitor could share with their friends and family. Then it had a tracker to show how many people you'd shared it with. Harry's gamified the referral process by setting up nice prizes for how many referrals a visitor had made. Referring five friends earned a free shaving cream, referring 10 friends earned free, a free razor, referring 25 friends earned a free premium razor, and referring 50 friends earned you free shaving for a year. These incremental prizes were a great method of convincing customers to share their referral code with their friends and family. Plus, it built the excitement over the company finally opening its doors. This campaign led to Harry's receiving 100,000 email signups in just one week. Raider shared that 77% of the collected emails were referrals. This massive email list allowed Harry's to ensure that when they finally opened, they weren't just making their opening to crickets. They had an engagement and excitement from their audience when their products were finally available, which helped them become highly successful. Harry's successfully built their skyscraper on land they owned, their email list, instead of on land someone else owned, such as shelf space in a big box store. They now own the relationships with their customers and can contact their customers at any time, something that would be nearly impossible to do with a big box distribution strategy. Years ago, I worked as the chief revenue officer for a company called Family Link. Family Link had created a Facebook app called We're Related that allowed users to connect with family members and show those connections on Facebook. During my first 12 months with the company, the app was wildly successful and we were able to generate more than $5 million in revenue. The app became the fourth most popular on Facebook and had 90 million installs. Facebook saw how popular our app was and decided to create much of that same functionality into their core Facebook offering. And not only that, they removed our app from the user's main profile pages, the, the users who had already installed it. Essentially, Facebook decided to compete and then made it extremely difficult for us to compete. It was kind of like the landowner changing the terms of the deal after we'd built the skyscraper. And it was all perfectly legal because our app was built on their platform. We had built a metaphorical skyscraper on land they owned, and they could do just about anything they wanted. It is unwise to build our business under these types of circumstances where we are not the masters of our own destinies. Facebook isn't the only platform that does this. As another example, Amazon encourages third-party vendors to sell on their platform. However, in many cases, when they see a highly profitable product, they create their own version of the same product and compete. Seth Godin, the renowned marketing author, said, Facebook and other social media platforms seem like a shortcut because they make it apparently easy to reach new people. But the trade-off is that you're a sharecropper. 
It's not your land. You don't have permission to contact people. They do. You don't own an asset. They do. This doesn't mean using social media sites is a bad idea. The lesson I learned from the Facebook experience was the importance of building our own lists. An email list full of customers and potential customers that have already shown interest in our products or services is one of the most valuable assets a business can own. Joe Polizzi, founder of Content Marketing Institute, explained it perfectly when he said, an email list is critical because you can't build your content on rented land. So many brands and companies build their audiences on Facebook and Google+, which was a big deal at the time, but we don't own those names. Facebook and Google do. If we're thinking like real media companies, the asset is the audience. That quote was obviously from back when Google Plus was a viable platform, but it illustrates the problem with building our business to be reliant upon other platforms. Those platforms can go out of business and we lose all of the investment we put into building our presence on that platform. Does this mean we should avoid ever using social media platforms or other companies' websites? Of course not. They're still a great source for growing our reach. The point I'm trying to make here is that the end goal of our platform strategy must land outside of those platforms. We need to control the relationship and communication we have with our customers and potential customers. That means we're building our email lists, gathering phone numbers and mailing addresses, anything that will allow us to contact people off of the platform we found them on. Jeff Bullis, a social media marketing manager said, the most effective tactic is the use of email marketing to drive a real return. The reason it is effective is that people may engage and share on social, but they will buy from a sequence of emails that educate first and sell second. Here's another example. Living Social is a coupon company that recognizes the importance of capturing the contact information of prospective customers. They recognize that customers who love coupons are usually willing to give up their contact information in exchange for those coupons. That's why Living Social requires the email address of any of their website visitors. That's right, every single visitor. If they want to see what coupons Living Social has to offer, they must exchange their contact information to see those coupons on the website. That's an aggressive campaign that wouldn't work for all businesses. Uh, after all, most visitors need to experience something of value before they're willing to give up their email address. However, Living Social has found that it works for their unique customers. One of the keys to Living Social's success is that the emails they send have great value to their ideal customers. For example, one of the emails the company sends out is called Instant Deals. The idea behind this is to help people find a spot to eat lunch. Right when their customers are beginning to think about what they'll eat for lunch, they receive an email with instant deals that can save them money on their meal and give them ideas for where they might like to eat. I love this example because it shows how well Living Social knows their customers. Both the manner in which they collect contact information and the information they send in their emails demonstrates that they know their ideal customers well. Each business has its own unique audience with their own unique desires and preferences. We need to build our platform on that. The better we know our audience, the better we'll know what kind of email capturing will work best for them and what kind of plan we should implement. Then we'll be able to provide them with effective emails that will transition them through the buyer's journey. Authority occurs when someone takes the right steps to combine standout, trustworthy expertise in his or her field with the kind of high visibility you might often associate with a celebrity. When that happens, the expert's name becomes synonymous with the field he or she works in. That was said by Adam Witte and Rustin Shelton, the authors of Authority Marketing. Most business leaders have expertise, passion, and knowledge that we can share with others. When we share that expertise, passion, and knowledge on our own platforms, we can often become an influencer in our niches. We can become an influencer and thought leader by writing a book, speaking at events, hosting a podcast, creating YouTube videos, writing blog posts, sending an email newsletter, and more. As we provide our followers with useful and engaging content, they'll want more and more from us and we'll begin to build a true relationship. One of the reasons this works so well is because we're providing value before we ask for anything in return. Once we've established our expertise and created a loyal following, we'll be able to market our products and services in a way that is authentic and credible. Again, it's important to recognize that as we're building our followings on social media, we need to find ways to build a list of our followers we can own 
and can contact off social media platforms. The more we can encourage our followers to visit our sites and sign up for our email lists, the stronger our foundation will be. Then we'll be building our skyscraper on land we own. Here are some of the top takeaways that stood out to me from this episode. Number one, we need to build our metaphorical skyscrapers on land we own. This means growing huge email lists, membership sites, or other platforms where we own the customer contact information and permission to contact customers and potential customers directly. Number two, our social media efforts when we're using someone else's platform should focus on getting our customers to come to our platform and to gather their contact information and permission to market to them. Number three, the asset is the audience. In other words, the lists we build will become one of the greatest assets of our companies. We can leverage our platforms to become influencers when we share our knowledge and expertise. Becoming an influencer can give us more control over our destinies because we cannot get deplatformed as we've seen happen to thousands and thousands of people over the last months. A platform then cannot block us from contacting our own followers. Did you like today's episode? Then please follow these channels to receive free digital monetization content. Number one, get a free monetization assessment for your business at monetizationnation.com forward slash assessment. Number two, subscribe to the monetization e-magazine at monetizationnation.com forward slash e-magazine. Number three, subscribe to the Monetization Nation YouTube channel or podcast. And number four, follow Monetization Nation on Instagram. If we desire monetization we have never before achieved, we must leverage strategies we have never before implemented. I challenge each of us to pick one thing that resonated with us from today's episode and schedule a time this week to implement it to help achieve our monetization goals. Are you building your skyscraper on land you own or on lease land? Please join our private Monetization Nation Facebook group and share your insights with other digital monetizers. Thanks for joining this episode. I hope you have a fabulous day. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.